Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense. Hope everybody out there is having an awesome day or evening. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about my final seventh fragrance in the line that I've been working on. I'm gonna go over the notes with you guys, go over the perfumer, how it smells to me, the idea behind the fragrance and everything like that. And this one is a doozy. I absolutely love, love this fragrance. And I love all of them, but this one is the one that has grown on me the most. It's one that initially I was lukewarm on, but oh man, I just kept going back to it. It's like it, it dug its claws into me and, and never let go. And every time I came back and wore it, I loved it more and more and more. So let's jump into this. First off, let me go ahead and spray it out here. Oh, I'm almost completely empty. Mm. So I guess first off, the perfumer, Francis Kirkjohn. Yeah, just amazing to be able to, to work on a fragrance with him. And uh, if you're unaware of Francis Kirkjohn for any reason, I don't know why, why you would be unaware of him, but if you are, he did Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mans and a lot of fragrances actually for that house, including Ultra Mall. Uh, he's done fragrances for Ellie Saab, which are fantastic fragrances for Burberry, but of course what he's most well known for, well, other than Le Mans, is Maison Francis Kirkjohn. Yeah, that is all him. Of course, because it's his house. His name is right there, Maison Francis Kirkjohn. Uh, of course, uh, Baccarat Rouge 540, probably the most well known from that house at this point, but there are countless amazing fragrances from that house. Now let's quickly go over the note breakdown here, the top, the mid, and the base. In the top, we have Italian bergamot and Sicilian lemon. So a little bit of a citrus combo there, but not really a fragrance that's super citrusy. There's also Litsia cubiba in the top and American spearmint. So those four notes are going to make up the beginning of this scent. Then in the mid, we've got French iris concrete, French lavender, Egyptian geranium, and warm apopanax. Into the base, we have a soft suede, Indonesian patchouli, Spanish labdanum absolute, Brazilian tonka absolute, and Madagascar vanilla. So this fragrance does start off with a little bit of freshness, but you also have this kind of old world feel to it. So it's fresh, it's wearable, it's sophisticated, it's refined, but at the same time, it's a little bit bold. It's a great, great fragrance. So, like I mentioned, you have those citruses in the top, a little bit of Litsia cubiba, and then that bit of spearmint, but the spearmint here does not come across like a super sweet spearmint. This is not a syrupy kind of spearmint whatsoever. In the mid, wonderful, wonderful floral composition, but it doesn't come across like a heavy floral. You have that iris concrete in there, a little bit of geranium helping with the freshness, and then lavender as well, a very nice high quality lavender. You do have a little bit of warmth in there, this slightly slightly balsamic feel from the Apopanax. And then as it dries down, you get that suede coming out, this nice soft suede, not animalic, not in your face. Mm, it smells great. Then you get bits of sweetness coming in from the tonka, the labdanum, the vanilla. It's, it's really another fragrance, very well blended, smells absolutely like nothing else I've ever smelled, completely doing its own thing here. And so the idea for this fragrance was a meeting of the past and the present. So kind of this meeting of classical, traditional, old school perfumery, meeting up with modern perfumery, modern ideas, and just kind of melding together into one fragrance. So that's what I meant when I said the fragrance does have sometimes this kind of old world vibe to it. It has this, this, this classiness, this aura about it but it's approached in a modern way. So it doesn't come across smelling like a grandpa or smelling unwearable. It, it does have a little bit of a modern edge. So it's almost like, uh, it's a little hard to describe, but maybe almost like a, a classic suit, you know, like a, a classic suit from the 30s or the 40s. Uh, you can wear that now and you're still going to look very well put together, but it has that old school feel to it. So this one really is a meeting of old and present. That was the, the entire 
idea of the fragrance and I think it just turned out perfectly. Absolutely love it. I think there's a lot of versatility uh, to the fragrance. You can wear it formally, you can wear it casually, you can wear it to the office, you can wear it on a date, you can do whatever with the fragrance. Again, it does have a little bit more of a refined feeling to it. It doesn't come across, you know, bubblegummy sweet or anything like that. And as you can tell by how much is not left in this bottle, I absolutely love it. And my wife as well really, really, really loves that fragrance and with her as well. I had to grow on her a little bit. So with that one, uh, I think if you, if you get that, you smell it, do give it just a little time, you know, let it grow on you because once it does, you're gonna just wear the heck out of that scent. And the quality on it, fantastic. Absolutely, absolutely in love with this one. And that is the, uh, the seventh fragrance. Francis Kirkshawn, a melding, a meeting of old world and new bottled up for you. Great, great scent. And uh, as far as seasons, I would say for me personally, spring, fall, you can wear it in winter, you could wear it in summer because it's not so heavy that it wouldn't work in the, uh, the higher heat. But at the same time, it does have enough depth and enough richness that it would work in the uh, cooler months as well. But I would say if you're just trying to pick out the absolute best times, spring and fall, and for me, maybe, maybe, maybe I give a slight nod or a slight edge to fall over spring, just barely. And as far as daytime or nighttime use for me, either one. So there we go, guys. Seventh fragrance, the seventh final one, last but not least. And of course, there's a link in the description to the first six fragrances. So I did a specific video for each one of them. You'll find those all linked below. What's going to be coming up next is some reaction videos. I have sent these off to a number of different people, including a professional perfumer, like a really, really high-end professional perfumer to check these out and give their opinions as well. So those will be coming up next on the channel, maybe every couple days or so, something like that. And um, after that, it's gonna be time to show you the rest of everything, give you the full Monty. Uh, everything. The presentation, the names, all that good stuff. So be on the lookout for that here very soon. Uh, probably go ahead and just hit you guys with the uh, perfumer checking out the fragrances first. So I will do that and then there's also some YouTubers. Um, my wife's friend that you guys all know, Mary, she checked them out as well. So all that coming here in the near future so that you can get some opinions for some or from some other people. We are in the home stretch. So hopefully you guys out there that do end up smelling these really, really enjoy them. Put in a lot of time, a lot of sleepless nights coming up with these and uh, working with the perfumers. And uh, yeah, just hope you like them. I freaking do. And so far the people that have smelled these both within the fragrance community and outside of it, you know, just people I know, friends or uh, coworkers, things like that, have really, really dug these. All right guys, that is gonna do it for me. Seventh fragrance in the bag. As always, thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all of your support. And I will see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys, stay safe out there.